favorite topic, right? <laughs> Everyone's super excited. All right, so bear with me. I uh, realize I forgot my laptop charger, so I'm just going to go off a PDF here. But you all will be able to have um, these hands handouts. And I'll email it to you as well. Yes. Um, so yeah, so what does financial aid mean for you all, right? So I'm sure that's the, the biggest question. Is this going to be able to happen? Are you going to be able to afford it? So hopefully I can answer most of those questions. And if not, um, we can chat later and I can get back to you. Um, but first I kind of want to just talk about what are some types of financial aid um, that you might all come across um, as graduate students. And uh, I guess some clarification. So yes, I'm Adrena. Um, I'm a coordinator of outreach in our office, and I'm actually a graduate student myself. Um, I'm graduating in May, so I kind of know what this process looks like. I know what it's like to borrow or to use graduate student financial aid. So please um, view me as a resource for any sort of questions that you may have, just even about the graduate process in general. And so the biggest things, I'm going to kind of dip in and out over here so you all can see, um, are going to be scholarships and loans for graduate students. So the type of finan financial aid that you all will be able to receive is going to be a little bit more limited than what you may have experienced as an undergraduate student. But as a graduate student, you're still eligible for scholarships. So UNC does have a financial aid scholarship application, and it's going to be through your student account. So have you all logged into your URSA or seen the student portal piece? Okay, so there is a tab um, under, well, it's the financial tab. Let me see what my next slide is. Oh, perfect. And this is actually where you can apply for the scholarship application. And have any of you done it yet? Okay, how long did it take you? Like maybe a minute, right? It's like, <laughs> okay, sometimes people get nervous because they think it's misleading. But our scholarship application for students is actually really incredible because um, we have streamlined it so much that this application should take you no longer than five minutes. Um, so in the past, a lot of scholarship applications say, hey, write me an essay, right? Um, how many of you have uh, filled out a scholarship application that required an essay? Okay, I guess the better question is, how many of you didn't fill out a scholarship application because it asked for an essay? So, yeah. <laughs> so our application doesn't ask for essays up front. Um, it is quite literally checkboxes. And so when you log into the scholarship application, it's going to have about 30 supplemental questions, and you just check off whatever is relevant to you. Um, our application actually has almost 700 scholarships on it. And why this is great is because when you submit this application, you're actually applying for all of them. And so it's one, and that's it. So this is why this is really incredible. Um, what else about this? So some of the supplemental questions are very interesting. So for those of you that have done it, um, so one of them is, are you, did you graduate from a high school in a rural area in Denver? Um, there's a scholarship to where that is relevant. I don't know what it's for, but those are the type of questions that you may come across. Um, now, the thing about this application is that once you submit it, from now until the first week of classes, um, you may hear from someone asking for, hey, we saw your information. We think you might be eligible for this scholarship. Or, hey, we, uh, we already know that you're eligible for this scholarship. We want to award you X amount of dollars. So scholarships you will be awarded from now until the first week of classes. So if you filled out this application, you're welcome to kind of be on the lookout. It'll be sent to your student email, so that bare mail. If you haven't done the scholarship application, go ahead and do it. Um, the priority deadline for you all is June 1st. And when I say priority deadline, um, that just means that as graduate students, unfortunately, we don't have a, an unlimited amount of funding, right? And so we have a priority deadline that says if you fill out your application by June 1st, you are more likely to receive scholarship funding than someone who fills it out after June 1st. So remember that that's probably the most important thing about that application is going to be that June 1st deadline. But again, it's going to be on your student portal under the financial tab, and it'll just say UNC scholarship application. So the next piece is actually going to be loans. I know everyone loves loans, right? No. Okay. So loans. Um, loans are something that are typically awarded to every sort of student. Um, usually the example I get is if you're applying for uh, financial aid as an undergraduate, as a graduate student, anyone will get loans. Bill Gates could theoretically um, decide I'm going to fill out a FAFSA and go to school. I don't know why he would ever do that, but it is possible, and he would still receive a student loan. 
Again, I don't know why you would use a student loan, but that's just to kind of give you an idea that loans are kind of everywhere when it comes to financial aid. So there will be two types of loans that you may come across as a graduate student when you fill out your FAFSA. How many of you have done a FAFSA? Okay, does anyone know what it means? It's probably like, yeah, federal something money. <laughs> we got all the words, just not in order. <laughs> yeah, free application for federal student aid. Has anyone not filled out, filled out a FAFSA before? Okay. Um, so talking about the FAFSA right quick, for those of you that this is a new experience, it is a government website. So it's FAFSA.gov. The reason why I say this is because there's actually a lot of scam sites out there, unfortunately. There's like FAFSA.com, FAFSA.net. Um, all that say, you know, hey, we're Department of Ed certified. Um, we'll do your application, your free application for federal aid for only $60, <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose, right, of a free application. So just be weary. Um, I've actually had quite a few families um, that have paid for these services, not realizing that they were not actually the FAFSA application. Um, so again, FAFSA.gov. So when I'm talking about loans, these are going to be the two ones uh, that you may come across. So I'll start with this bottom one first, graduate unsubsidized loan. So if any of you borrowed loans as an undergraduate student, you probably recognize the name unsubsidized. So this is just a general student loan that doesn't require credit check. All it requires is you being a student and being enrolled in at least five credit hours. That's the only requirement for this student loan. Now the thing about this student loan is kind of like all loans, they have an interest rate. Now the interest rate for this student loan is going to be 6%. And in theory, when it comes to loans, this is going to be a relatively decent um, interest rate, especially for graduate student loans. Um, however, this isn't to say that you don't have other options when it comes to financial aid. A lot of folks will automatically assume that FAFSA is the only way you can get financial aid, that scholarships are the only way. Um, just know that, let's say if you have a a bank, a loan, letter, loan lender or credit union that you're already working with, they may have student loans that are at a lower interest rate. But I will recommend to look at the ones that come from UNC um, because they are Department of Education. Um, you uh, don't have any requirements besides just being enrolled, being a student, so it is a lot less, um, uh, let's see here, specific, I guess, with requirements, where most other loans outside of the university will require a credit check. So that's going to be a super common thing. Now, this graduate unsubsidized loan, the maximum amount that you can receive each academic year, and when I say academic year, this is going to be from fall, <coughs> spring, to summer. So that's going to be one full year at UNC. Um, as a graduate student, you would be eligible to receive no more than $20,500 a year. Now, a lot of you folks are probably like, that's a lot of loan money. Or some of you may think, like, this is the funding that I need. Um, perhaps you are um, not going to be working full time. Maybe you have other responsibilities. Um, but just know that loans will be an option if necessary. Now, the Graduate PLUS loan is a little bit different. Again, you have to be a student. You have to be enrolled in at least five credit hours. Um, but the thing is that it does require a credit check. So this is a loan that you would be awarded, but you're not guaranteed because you do have to pass a credit check. Uh, but just know it will be an option as well. So when you receive financial aid from UNC, more than likely you will just see loans on the financial aid award letter. Unfortunately, that's a reality for a lot of our graduate students. Um, but no, there's still the possibility of scholarships um, for any sort of outside funding. So if you, again, if you have um, another financial institute, like a bank or so-and-so that you're already working with, those could be options. Um, but from any university, in general, this is kind of the basic graduate student financial aid that you may come across. Okay, so we already talked about the FAFSA. Um, so for those of you that do haven't done it yet, I'll just briefly cover this. So for this spring, since so technically you'd be starting in spring, um, that is going to be considered still the 2017-2018 academic year. So if you fill out a FAFSA, and you're needing to use financial aid for this spring semester, you wanna make sure you do the 2017-2018 application. And I know that can seem strange because it's already 2018, right? We're coming up to summer, but the spring semester is still a part of the 17-18 academic year. Now, since you also have classes this coming summer, you will also need to do the same year, right? <laughs> so it's the same academic year. So if you're wanting to use financial aid 
this spring, this summer, that's what you're going to want to look at. The reason why I'm kind of reiterating this is because for this coming year, so for fall of 2018, you're actually going to need to fill out the 2018-2019 FAFSA. So you do have to fill out this application every single year. It's not just a, I filled it out once and I'm done. You do have to recomplete the application every year you're wanting to utilize financial aid. So that is something you want to remember when you're going through this process. So not only completing that scholarship application, so when you're thinking of money for school, think of FAFSA, think of that scholarship application. Just do them all at the same time because they are necessary every academic year. So again, for this current semester, for spring and for summer, you're going to want to do the 2017-2018. And then for this coming fall, for any courses that you're taking in fall, you're going to make sure you do the next year, 2018-2019. When you do fill out your FAFSA, it will give you both options, and so you would might as well just do them kind of at the same time. So what is the cost of attendance? All right. Let me scroll up a little bit. All right. So for Extended Campus, for y'all's program in particular, um, there are no fees involved. So where the campus is located, you're not gonna be charged for, say, the library fee that's all the way in Greeley. That doesn't make sense, right? So the student fees that other students may experience on the main campus, you're not gonna have to worry about. So the biggest charge that you're looking at as an Extended Campus and Master's program is gonna be tuition. So for y'all's program specifically, per credit hour, it's $495. So fortunately, this kind of makes it easy trying to determine what your tuition is going to look like because you can quite literally just multiply that number by however many credits you're taking. So for this spring, you're taking six credits. So this is what you can expect with tuition for this semester. For summer, if you're taking 12 credits, this is going to be the amount that you can be expecting when it comes to tuition are going to be these prices right here. And for this coming year, that $4.95, well, at least for $17.18, um, that's going to be the tuition price now for this upcoming year. So for this upcoming fall, uh, there hasn't been a decision yet as to what tuition is going to look like for anywhere on the university, essentially. Um, but just know it doesn't change too much. So you can still kind of estimate for future years. Um, I know you all will have a course program, right? A list of these are the classes you need to take in this order. So you can already start doing that math, kind of figuring out what our future semester is gonna be um, like. It may not be spot on for future semesters, but it'll be pretty close. So you can start looking at these numbers now. Um, extended Campus and our financial aid page also has these prices available. Um, so let's say if you lose the PDF that we're going to send, or if you have any other questions, these, this information is going to be available on both our site, on financial aid under costs, and then extended campus as well. Um, now, if you're like me and have a hard time navigating anything when it comes to your website, just Google UNC extended campus costs. I've worked here for over four years, and I still do that for almost everything on campus. So don't worry if you can't remember this. Usually Google helps. So the other big thing, so we're talking about tuition is going to be the main charge. You won't see um, fees like the library, like our recreation center. Um, do know that some courses have specific class fees, um, and so some classes may have some sort of a lab or some sort of technology that's necessary for it, and so those classes may have an additional price with it, um, but it's not typically, I would say, over $100 for any course. Um, but again, it's not going to be too far off from that tuition number we're chatting about. Now, insurance, an option that you all have and all of our university students has is for student insurance. Now, this is not mandatory. This is optional as long as you already have insurance coverage. And so I want to just kind of give you some numbers to see what that would look like. Um, now, insurance is not going to be an option for this current semester for spring. But if you needed student insurance this coming summer, um, you will be able to uh, request it, essentially. And so these are going to be the costs for insurance for this summer. And so this is going to be each person. So as a student, you'd be paying $657 for the summer, which is, I believe, the end of May until the beginning of August. And then if you have a spouse who's interested in the insurance, that would be an add-on. Um, every child you have would be the uh, $1,314. So that's gonna, how, gonna be how the insurance works um, for this coming summer. Now, what is unique about summer 
is that you have to request insurance. But what I want to warn you all is that for this upcoming year, so for fall, when you start classes, which I know it might feel like it's a while away, UNC will actually put that on your account automatically. And so that may be strange because we're saying, oh, you have to ask for it. But then in a couple months, we're just going to put it on your account. So the reason why I'm warning you is because there is a waiving option. So you have to request to have your insurance waived. Now, what that means, oh, gotta, we're going to pretend there's something there. No. Um, so where I'm talking about with the scholarship application, we're talking about URSA, that financial tab. Under the same area, there's going to be an option to waive your insurance. There's a couple slides later that I'll be able to show you where that's at. Um, but the thing is, is if you waive insurance, it is going to ask you for who are you currently insured by, what's the, um, the number, who is the main person under the insurance card, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't have insurance coverage, it will be mandatory. So you do have to have insurance while you're attending the university. Um, but again, so when fall rolls around, you're enrolling in classes, you start looking at your bill as a student, you're going to see insurance on there. But just remember, you have to waive it, because it won't disappear. You have to do that manually. And I'll show you where that is in a minute. So the next piece. So we talk about what financial aid is available. So we got the loans, scholarships, um, tuition, right? You're looking at the bill. The big things are tuition, your classes, and then insurance. Um, after that, kind of what happens next after everything is covered? Uh, maybe you have more financial aid. Um, and needed to pay off the bill, which happens for a lot of our students. So let's say if I borrow a loan for $1,000, but my tuition's only $500 in the perfect world, right? Then I would have $500, the difference to myself, to spend on whatever I need, any sort of educational costs, expenses, etc. So now, if you are in the situation to where you use financial aid, any of your student loans, scholarships, and you pay off your student bill, and there is still funding left over, that is for you to use. Uh, we call it a, a refund. The AR just means accounts receivable because that's the department. I didn't really think about that when I put it up there. Um, but we have our billing office called accounts receivable. And essentially what will happen is after uh, classes start and you have excess financial aid that you're utilizing, you would be able to pick that up in a check or request to have it direct deposited into your account. So a lot of our students will utilize that if they're needing money for books. Um, if they are needing uh, transportation costs, right, getting to and from places, um, any sort of supplies that they may, may need, or just living expenses in general. And so that funding is totally up to you to use. Now, I would say that when we're looking at refunds, when we're looking at excess financial aid, it's all about smart borrowing, if you will, because a lot of this money is going to be loans. And so I know it can be great to suddenly see, oh, there's $5,000 that I can just spend, because that's the most amazing feeling when that happens. Um, but it's a loan. So you gotta be conscientious about the fact that this is ultimately money you're gonna have to pay back. Now in the short run, it's a, well, you know, I'm in a couple year program, I can wait. Um, unfortunately, I graduate in a couple months and I'm already getting all the emails saying, remember all that money you used? Now I do, <laughs> and so just know they are very persistent. So when you're borrowing loans, if you can cap it at a certain amount, I would recommend it. But also know that it's available if necessary. Billing dates, now this is probably one of the most important things you're gonna to wanna to look at. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. So for summer courses, what will happen is after you're registered, you will have a student bill on your account by May 1st. And so what this is going to mean is you will be notified by the university to say, hey, everything you're enrolled in, if you're using insurance, et cetera, we've put that on your bill for the university and you can now go look at it. You can make payments. You can kind of see if any of it's accurate. Um, you can see at that point in time if insurance is on it, if it's not. But all of those charges from UNC will be generated on your account by May 1st. You'll get a paper letter um, if you indicated a home address. Um, and you'll also get an email statement. So you'll get everything electronic as well. Now on May 11th, for, these, uh, for the summer semester, what will happen is it's going to pay out. Your financial aid will pay out at that point in time. So that is when you will see any sort of loans that you've borrowed, um, any sort of um, essentially scholarship funding if you've been awarded anything for the summer semester. Um, that will apply to your student bill. And what I mean by that is if I borrowed a $5,000 loan, that money is going to go and pay off 
any fees that I have from the university. So that's what I mean when I say disperse. Now classes for the summer are gonna start May 14th. So it's not really far away, um, but that is when the summer semester technically starts. Now that doesn't mean every single summer class is gonna start, uh, but that's just the summer semester in general begins on the 14th. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because with the uh, summer financial aid piece, the summer bill piece, it's very unique in comparison to the rest of the year uh, because bills will be due um, May 25th for the summer semester. Um, and so if you're utilizing financial aid, you'll already have your financial aid, so paying off your bill won't be too difficult, right? It's gonna be right after, you'll have the financial aid funding, you can pay that towards your summer bill, which is gonna be due on the 25th. If you're not utilizing financial aid, keep that date in mind, because you will still need to pay off your student bill um, for any summer courses. The spring semester, so to backtrack, um, it's interesting for spring at this point in time um, for when you're starting classes. And so with financial aid, what will happen is once you're enrolled in courses for this coming spring, you'll receive uh, an email from us saying, hey, if your current spring classes that you're enrolled in, you've been awarded financial aid. So this semester is going to be very unique, and I promise it won't be this um, strange every year. Um, it's just with the courses starting at the very tail end of the spring semester, um, it works a little funky on every side of the university. Um, but just know, always check your student email. Always look at your student account. Um, I get a lot of phone calls saying that um, from folks saying, um, I haven't received anything. I don't know what's going on. Why am I not being notified? Well, they're looking at their personal email and they're not checking their student email. So that's going to be the main way that the university notifies you all of any sort of um, thing that we're needing, whether it's um, financial aid information of, hey, you didn't do your FAFSA. You should do your FAFSA. Right, and that'll probably come from me. So if any of you haven't done your FAFSA, you'll probably receive an email from me soon. <laughs> um, but again, emails are important. Now this last piece, service charges. So really at any university, if your bill's not paid on time, you're gonna be charged a late fee. So that's what the service charge means. Now any day or any month that your bill goes unpaid, the university charges 1.5% of what you owe. Now if you owed maybe like $500, which is still a lot, you know, you're not gonna see a huge late fee. Um, but let's say if you forget to pay off your bill, you're behind on the financial aid piece, you could be looking at a $100 or $200 late fee, depending on how much you owe. So it's 1.5% what, whatever your current bill balance is, which can be quite significant if you're not conscientious about what you're owing before classes begin. So these are gonna be the main dates. Again, don't worry about writing them down. Uh, you'll be sent them by email or printed, I'm not quite sure, probably both, maybe. <laughs> but you'll have the dates, so these will be on here. Financial aid for this coming spring, we're actually in the process of awarding students. So if you've completed your FAFSA, within the next, within the next two weeks, you'll receive a notification that you've received financial aid for your coming classes. So that is happening now. Um, but you won't be awarded until you're registered. So as soon as you're registered for courses, which is my understanding happening pretty soon? Probably tonight. Tonight, perfect. Um, so immediately after, no. <laughs> um, so again, within the next couple of days, it's usually the uh, last week of March, which is next week or the beginning of April. Um, but again, check on your, your uh, bear mail because we'll send you a notification of saying, hey, it's done, check your account, see if everything looks good. Bear pay. So UNC actually has a payment plan, which can be pretty nifty if you are in a situation to where you don't want to utilize any of your loans, maybe you only want to use partial amounts of your loans. That is one thing I didn't mention is if you're awarded $20,500 in loans, that doesn't mean you have to borrow $20,500 in loans. You can pick and choose how much funding that you need. Uh, but just know that Let's say this coming year, you're awarded $20,000, 500, well, gosh, I can't speak, $20,500, and you decide for this first semester, I only need 5,000. And then the semester starts closing, and you realize, I actually need more than that. That's okay. You can still request any sort of loan funding that's been awarded to you, even if you don't accept the full amount. So you are not obligated to borrow loans or to borrow everything that's been offered. You can pick and choose whatever you want. And if you decide at a later date in the semester that I didn't borrow enough, you can contact us and we can work with you to get whatever else financial aid you have paid to your account. So don't worry about trying to 
pick a specific amount when it comes to financial aid um, because you will have the option to um, change that later in the semester if necessary. So you're not stuck with whatever loan you borrow, whatever amount. With the bear pay piece, um, this is also an electronic process through your student account. Um, as you all are probably getting, right, the, the student account is kind of like the mini city uh, for UNC. Anything student account related, student finance related, um, registering for classes, um, checking grades, all of that is going to be through the student account. Now, the bear pay piece, um, it is a monthly payment plan for offered each semester by our billing office. Um, you have to enroll and it's a $50 enrollment fee. Now, what I would suggest about this payment plan is to really consider whether or not it's necessary. And I know this might sound very strange coming from someone in financial aid, but think about it in the terms of the lesser of two evils. Because sometimes folks will say, I need this bear pay because I have a bill that's unpaid, so I need to sign up for a payment plan. But their late fee is going to be a dollar every month. So is it really worth it to sign up for a $50 plan if you're going to get charged a late fee of a buck? So some folks don't necessarily consider that cost. Now you're not penalized for, oh, the student has a, a bill unpaid for the month. You're not dropped from your classes, so don't worry about that. Um, but just know that if there is a, because I have a lot of folks who maybe they owe $1,000 and they say, well, I'm going to sign up for this bear pay. Realistically, you're probably paying more for the payment plan than just taking a late fee. And so you can be strategic. And I know, again, that probably sounds really strange <laughs> coming from me. But I'm trying to think of it from the perspective of what is the less amount that you're going to have to pay, right? So there are things that you can consider. You're not going to be dropped from classes. Um, there are situations to where folks are waiting for funding to come in, whether it's a scholarship or maybe you're waiting for a paycheck. That's fine. You're not going to be kicked out. That happens. It's normal, right? People experience that all of the time. Uh, but just know that you do have options when it comes to paying the bill. Now. For the summer semester, it may be a little bit more interesting to sign up for a $50 payment plan, but I would recommend to start looking at that for this coming fall and this coming spring because you have four to five months uh, worth of monthly payments for each semester in comparison to summer where you have two. And so with the bear pay, what it'll do is whatever balance you owe, it's going to divide that up into either four or five semesters. I say that because there are a few dates that you can enroll for the program. Um, one is you can enroll by August, and the next you can enroll by the end of September. So you have kind of time to figure that out. So the payment plan is flexible. Um, but again, um, you can enroll in this program if necessary. I would only recommend really looking at it for the upcoming fall and spring semester, because it doesn't always make a whole lot of sense to use it over summer, um, since you only have two months. So um, hopefully financial aid, well financial aid should theoretically cover those expenses. So I wouldn't have to worry too much about a payment plan, at least for these couple of months. Do we have any oh, images? Sorry about the images not showing up. Um, do we have any military affiliated folks? Okay, so we can scroll down then. Okay. So these are just some more of the financial aid dates. Um, so again, FAFSA, um, priority deadline is June 1st. Our scholarship application, the priority deadline is June 1st. Now, these are actually available. Um, let's see here. So the FAFSA is going to be available for, oh gosh, 2019-2020. That's so bizarre saying. <laughs> yeah. So the FAFSA, the new FAFSA for every year comes out October 1st. Um, so really within, I don't know, another four or five months, you'll already be prompted to fill out next year's FAFSA. So that's very strange to say that. But the FAFSA application is always going to be available beginning October 1st for whatever academic year you're applying for. Again, you'll probably receive emails from me saying, hey, you should do this, it's important. Um, our scholarship application is also available November 1st. You'll be receiving email notifications of saying, hey, our scholarship application is live for this upcoming year. Go ahead and fill out the five minute application because if you don't, that might be super silly. Um, so again, check your email. That's how we communicate. Um, health insurance, now for this coming fall, again, right, it's gonna be automatically applied to your account. These are the dates you're gonna wanna remember. So the earliest you can waive your fall semester insurance is gonna be May 5th. And so you can begin that process. It is through your student account under your URSA. Oh my gosh, your URSA is your student account. <laughs> it's going to be on your URSA under the financial tab. Um, it quite literally says waive insurance. 
And so you would just select the hyperlink and then it would take you to the insurance page for UNC and it's just gonna ask you to fill out your name, who's your insurer, and then uh, who's on the card or who's on the plan, essentially. Uh, but just know that is gonna be August thir uh, 31st is when that's due. So if you don't submit a waiver for insurance, if you forget, um, you will be charged insurance for the fall semester. They are not super lenient with folks who try to submit a waiver after the deadline. In fact, I know quite a few folks who worked at the university that could prove they were insured by the university who were not necessarily guaranteed to have that fee waived. And so they get pretty strict about it. Um, so just know that is a very hard deadline. It's gonna be that August 31st. Oh no! <laughs> It's weird it worked last night. I know, I feel it like I should just see if I can log in my account. Um, but you know what, we can, we can show them. Now. Okay. Yeah, we'll show them <laughs> later. Yeah. Let's see what else is down there. We'll show them later, John. Okay. What happens though with the yeah, there PDF stuff? general pointing. Um, so Ursa, you've probably already seen this page. You have uh, three or four tabs at the top, depending if you're an employee of the university. Um, but there is going to be something that just quite literally says financial. And then when you click on the financial tab, you go one more down. Anything finance related from the university will be located there. Um, your bill, you can't really see it, um, but this says billing. This one says financial aid. Um, there is a health insurance waiver in one of these blurry lines, but they are all under this tab. So when you are awarded financial aid and you get notified from our office to, you know, hey, check out your account, see what you've received from UNC, you're gonna to wanna to log into your URSA under that financial tab, look at your award letter, and you're gonna be taken to this page and it just wants to know what year you win. Now for the spring semester, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you look at 2017, 2018. Again, because that's going to be the academic year for this spring. The reason why I'm saying that is because you'll, you'll see two years. And so if you select 18, 19, you're not going to see anything yet. So I don't want you to panic and <laughs> think you don't have financial aid. So you're looking at 17, 18. <clears throat> now here is actually the scholarship application. So this is going to be the same URSA piece, financial. So this is where you would view... Um, your financial aid, and then at the very bottom, it's called the UNC scholarship application. You would select that link, and you would just complete it. Super simple, you can do it on your phone. It's not uh, incredibly difficult, again, um, but it is gonna be located on your URSA. I think that's it with URSA. Student bill. So one thing I would actually recommend with the student bill is if you have the option, set up direct deposit. If you are wanting to utilize financial aid for personal expenses, so let's say if you borrow more financial aid, right, than you need for tuition, our billing office will make you drive to Greeley <laughs> to pick up a physical check. Um, there are occasions where they will mail it, um, but with a physical check, they usually make students go to the campus to pick it up. There is actually a direct deposit form from the university that you can fill out, um, put your bank information on it, and it goes to our payroll office. Um, I don't have any of that information on here at this point in time, um, but there is a way to automatically have that money deposited into your bank account, and I would highly recommend it um, because once financial aid is dispersed, usually folks will receive that excess money within a few days if they have a, a bank account added. If they don't and you have to drive right to Greeley, it could take like a week or so. And so start thinking about that. Start thinking of setting up those programs, direct deposit. Um, It was all blurry before. Yeah, there you go. So under billing, direct deposit. So again, anything money related. Um, and if you're having to squint right now, you'll have this on a, a PDF. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So contact information. What I would highly recommend is to use this email in particular. 
Um, I would even argue not to use my personal email because if you use this one, I get to funnel it in and say, okay, these ones are specifically from Extended Campus. I want to make sure I answer these at you know this point in time. If you answer or uh, email my specific adrena.pollack that goes with every other email that I may be receiving in and outside of the university. So try to use this one because I will be able to respond to you sooner. And so that Extended Campus email. Um, you're also welcome to call our office. You can ask for me. Um, you can just say it. If you call our office, you'll probably speak to someone and you say, hey, I want to chat with Adrena. They'll say, what is it regarding? <laughs> As with most areas, right? You can just say it's extend to campus and they'll direct you my way. Um, but yeah, you will be prompted for those sorts of uh, those questions of, hey, you know, why are you needing to speak with her? Just say extend to campus. Um, but that is going to be our general office information. Again, please contact me with any questions. I'm sure that after leaving, um, I may have made some things even more confusing, um, or you may have even more questions after you leave tonight. I know a lot of times when I leave these things, I realize that there was a hundred more things that I wish was said. Um, just know that financial aid by nature is complicated. It can be incredibly intimidating. Um, I have filled out a FAFSA for, geez, um, seven years total, I guess now. And I hate doing it every year. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I work in my department. I still hate it because it's the FAFSA, right? It's, it's very tedious, but just know it is worth it once you get it over with. Um, but also, please see me as a resource in our office. Um, any sort of questions that you may have financially about your program, university in general, please let me know. But that is all I have. What kind of questions may you all have? Okay, I hear what you're saying. Um, yes. So since you're not attending this past fall, right, it's already over, um, you would receive, so I guess let me back up. When you receive financial aid, the financial aid you receive is going to be for fall, spring, summer, kind of like what you're implying there. So what would happen is for your summer and spring financial aid, um, you would more than likely be able to utilize more financial aid for those semesters since you're not paying for a fall semester. So there is a semester that you are not having to cover since you're starting later in the year. Um, but yes, whatever financial aid you receive for the spring is 